welcome back to Movie Review Mom. And if this is the very first time that you've watched this channel, yay, you found me. I'm so glad. My goal is to give you the heads up on filmmaking quality and content so that you can make the best decision for you and your loved ones as to whether or not you want to spend time and money watching a specific film. So you can also find me on Instagram, on Facebook, in the Movie Review Mom Facebook group, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, everywhere. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Let's get down with the movie review. So the name of the film I'm reviewing today is called The Only One. This romantic drama is now available on video on demand. And if you want to watch this on Amazon Prime, but don't yet have an account, click down below because I've got a coupon for you. Actually, it's a 30-day free trial on Amazon. So yay! The movie is rated R and it's an hour and 44 minutes. I'm going to give you an overview in a nutshell. I'll point out things I liked and didn't like, as well as offer tips for parents, themes worth talking about, and even recommendations for some other movies that I think you might like better than this one. All right, let's get started. In a nutshell, on the brink of accepting a life of independence and wanderlust, a young woman visits an old flame in his vineyard in France and takes one last shot at a committed relationship. The film was written by Seth Gilbert and directed by his brother, Noah Gilbert. I love that. I love supporting family movies not that they're family friendly necessarily but you know that they have created something together there were plenty of things that i liked about the movie first of all france we get to wander around the gorgeous south of france in beautiful landscapes and escape to a vineyard i don't even drink alcohol or wine specifically um, but i could definitely appreciate a beautiful vineyard and of course france there's a lovely soundtrack that goes with the film that i thought just set the tone nicely. And there's some beautiful lighting that bathes almost every scene in an afternoon gold. It was just very pretty to look at. Puppy dog Daniel is played by Joshua Groth and Blake Lindsley and Hugo Armstrong round out the main cast. I'll tell you about the leading lady here in just a second. Robert Frost's poem, The Road Not Taken is talked about with insights that will actually make you think. And I really appreciated that. Now, there were more things that I didn't like than I did like about the movie. First of all, Tom slash Natalie is played by Australian actress, Caitlin Stacy. She's beautiful to look at and did a really good job, but the freeloading, carefree character she plays in this romantic drama is rude, crass, selfish, and unappealing for me. I could see why guys would like her, but as a woman, I didn't think she was right at all for Daniel. <laughs> she shows very little respect for others and their values, and it just made me not want to be with her love interest, Daniel. I felt bad for him the entire time, assuming that he was going to get dumped again, all while abandoning his own responsibilities and the life that he had carefully created for himself and loved. Every minute that I watched, I just worried that Natalie slash Tom would trample all over his heart. And I also thought, why are we calling her Tom? Her name is Natalie. And they never really explained that in the movie. She definitely brought vibrancy and life to his life. However, she also complicated his life and got him in trouble and uh, drew him away from his goals and his focus and all that kind of stuff. I don't want to give you any spoilers. I'm just saying, <laughs> as a mother of four sons, I wouldn't want any of them dating her. <laughs> For a romance, there definitely should have been more kissing, just saying. Um, there was more sadness about, there was more sadness and nostalgia about the couple than warmth and true love. There's a spider tattoo, ick, and hairy armpits on a beautiful girl, ick. <laughs> I know that's very French, but she's actually Australian in the movie. Do they do that in Australia? I don't know. Comment down below. Some viewers will complain that nothing really happens in the movie. So know ahead of time that it's a slow burn and a character study, not a big plot with action sequences or anything like that. Let me give you some tips for parents. First of all, this is really not an appropriate movie for kids. And 
Kids are going to be completely bored anyway, and so will some adults. You'll see a dead horse at the very beginning of the movie. There are some profanity, crude conversations, and so many F-bombs. A woman casually talks about having an abortion and says, it's not a big deal. Lots of alcohol, cigarettes, and coffee drinking, and a transvestite is in a scene. Now, there were themes that were illustrated well in the movie, I thought, such as toxic relationships, ghosting people, attachment, connection, choices in life, lifestyle versus style of life, enjoying and living life, fate, travel, selfishness. And the big question asked was, do you think there's only one right person for everyone? The title of the movie being the only one. It's an interesting question. So I always write down funny lines and interesting lines and share them with you also on my written review at moviereviewmom.com. However, I didn't write down any funny lines at all. There really isn't much humor. It's pretty much a drama. It's supposed to feel, I think, carefree and whimsical, but it just didn't really come out that way for me. However, there were quite a few interesting lines. For example, um, this transvestite in the bar is talking to them and he says, he, she says, freedom has its chains, doesn't it? And he's talking to her specifically because she wants freedom. She doesn't want to be tied down. And so I thought that that was a really insightful line. And then Rob, who's played by Hugo Armstrong says, I don't believe in the one for everyone, but I believe in the one for me. And I thought that that was really sweet. And of course, his wife was like, oh, <laughs> and he scored big points that night. <laughs> so overall, my movie review mom grade for the film is a C plus. Now, let me give you some recommendations for some other films that I think that you might like and even like better than this one. The first one that I thought of was Under the Tuscan Sun with Diane Lane. I just think that that's such a charming movie because you really like the protagonist as opposed to this movie where I just didn't like her at all, but she goes to Italy and has an adventure as her heart is recovering from some things. And so I think you'll like that movie better if you haven't seen it. And by the way, I got to meet Diane Lane in person a number of years ago. We're just besties now. Now, not really, but I have a picture to prove that I met her. <laughs> and then another movie that I thought of is called Me Before You. There's a sadness to that movie as well, which I felt with this one. And then the last one that I want to recommend is called Bottle Shock. I just recently discovered that the other night, watching it on Netflix, or maybe it was Amazon Prime. Now I can't remember. And my husband and I got a kick out of it because it's about a California vineyard that goes on to compete in a wine competition in France. What's cool is it's based on a true story. And again, we don't even drink alcohol, but we really enjoyed the film. And the big uh, candy on top was that it stars Chris Pine. I just love Chris Pine. So check that one out if you're into wine and you want to go to France and um, there's a little bit of romance in that one as well. All right, that's it. I hope that if you watch this movie that you do enjoy it. And I hope you have a fantastic day. And I will catch you in the next movie review. Bye for now. Yeah.